Okay, back again. So, um, can y'all see my screen? It doesn't say. Oh yeah, it is. Okay, sorry. Now I gotta do it again. But yeah, so that's one of my my favorite quotes because I feel like we can learn um throughout life, and I think that really helps us grow. And I'm I'm listening to Will Smith's like biography on Audible. It's so good, y'all. And he was talking about how. Um, the saying that where you like when you when you're in class you take a test and then where well, you prepare for the test and the test like teaches you the lesson but like in life you take the test and then you can decide if you want to learn the lesson so I was like oh that's so good welcome but so as far as like study tips goes um definitely being organized for us at Shenandoah University um I had a colleague who was just amazing like she would make the best study guides and um different like templates and everything and we had like one whole google drive and we would separate the classes through google drive like one would be for anatomy one was for msk and we would put everything in there we knew like when assignments were due because we had like a um a huge calendar so everyone could kind of go in and we just made sure like everyone was on the same page and then as far as assignments so for me Um, and I talk about this in my book too, like I really looked at assignments like in a comprehensive model. So if I had an assignment for um, a patient who had a total knee replacement and we had to talk about their gait or something, like then I would say, okay, what are signs and symptoms of infections? What are signs and symptoms of like um, a DVT, a PE? Um, what would be like, a sign and symptom for like a, a pressure sore, a bed sore. And I would do it like that. So then I'm studying for multiple classes at one time. And then we also use at Shenandoah um, this website called Texas Anatomy. Can y'all still see my screen with Texas Anatomy? Okay. And from here, they were really, it was just, it's from Texas Tech University Health Science Center. And um This is like a really good resource for us to be able to learn about dissection, cadavers, um, blood supply, nerve supply. And they were just so detailed. So let me click on this so y'all can. Like this is a video of them doing like a dissection of the lats. Continue to reflect the muscle toward its anterolateral border. So that's like exposure to um, cadavers, you know, so... And they also had like different test questions and stuff on here that would help prepare us for our exam. So that's one of my favorite websites to go to. And then also group studying, I recommend that as well, um, just to work on hand skills and manual skills and working with different type of um, body types. So. And this is a test question example. So Tom hurt his arm while farming. He has pain when he flexes and supinates his forearm. What nerve innervates the muscle that is responsible for elbow flexion and supination? So I would get frustrated when I would read questions like this because if I read it and I'm like, okay, he has pain when he's flexing and supinating his forearm, like automatically in my head, I'm like, okay, that's biceps. And I'm done. Like it, to me, it's like, that's the answer is biceps. And then I go look at the answer choices and I'm like, what? I don't even, what are y'all talking about? So that is what, like the multi-step questions was always like tricky for me. But once I learned how to study for it um, and kind of break down the question, it made it easier for me. And I was always like good at the short answer questions too. Like my professor was like, you know what you're talking about. Like you have the knowledge, you're just letting this exam like trick you and like trip you up and I'm like if y'all didn't make the exam so hard I wouldn't be tripped up like I know what I'm talking about but it was really structured like how the NPT is structured so I appreciate that they did it that way but um so the answer to this question would be D musculocutaneous nerve because it's asking what nerve generates that muscle and like not what um muscle does that action and some more study tips So same thing like for anatomy, um, we would come over here and we would get like a scapula and we would label the scapula, all the parts of the scapula. 
And then we would say, okay, what muscle attaches to the infraglenoid tubercle? And then we would take it a step further and we would say, okay, what is the blood supply to the muscle that attaches here? Or what is the innervation to the muscle that attaches, attaches here? Because that's how it was formed in our um, exams. And then also like in school, I had like a big mirror in my apartment and I would just write down everything that um, I was having trouble with studying. And so when I woke up, I saw it. When I went to sleep, I saw it. And that just helped me with a lot of like recall and retain that information. I also would do it for my phone. Like I would set my background in my phone as um like the screensaver as like a study, um, study guide or something that I was having trouble with. I would put it there so that I could always look at it. And as far as the NPTE, I think some people are getting ready to take that. So that is wonderful. It's going to go great. And a lot of times too, we'll say, oh, I just started studying, studying six weeks ago. And it's like, no, you've been studying for like two to three years now. Like you definitely have the knowledge to pass the NPTE. But um, for me, I use so many different like um, study things and platforms to use, but at the end of the day, I feel like these three things like help me the most. So number one, the MPT Final Frontier. I did a mega review from that. And um, the clinical I was in at the time like paid for us to do it. So I highly recommend that. It, it was like a three-day course and they gave you like practice questions. And then we would also like hop on Zoom and they would go over like the whole exams and um they were just really good. I always tell like MPT, Frontal Frontier, they need to open up their own PT school because they break down things so well for everyone to learn from. Um, okay, good. Jayla said she used all of those. Okay, good. Because you're going to pass. When are you taking the MPT? It's coming In up. April. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got it. Yeah. You already passed. Done. Yeah. The PT Hustle Cheat Sheets. So it's about, I don't can't remember how many cheat sheets it is, but it goes over different topics in like a short um, time frame, and it breaks it down and it really just hits on the things that you really need to know. And um, so I highly recommend buying those and getting those. And then also I recommend listening to every episode of the MPTE Clinical Files podcast. So that can be found on like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, things like that. But these are the three things that I feel like you're automatically going to pass. Like if you take the time to... um listen to what they have to say and study but yeah they did really really good and I like Final Frontier too because they gave us like um study strategies of how it will be worded the questions will be worded so they would say like two answer choices might sound the same and then two choices might be the opposite of that so then it's like you can answer it without really like even if you forgot that information like you could still figure it out by the way like by the techniques they showed us so chapter five, this is um, called clinical rotations. And this is where I talk about what I was doing throughout physical therapy school. So I did two clinical rotations in outpatient ortho, um, one in outpatient neuro, one in home health, one in inpatient rehab, one in outpatient peds. And I did two one week long um, rotations in Guatemala. But this is from my outpatient, my second outpatient ortho clinic. And this was in Blythewood, South Carolina. And my CI, we actually went to high school together. So he wasn't that much more um, older than me. And he was just an amazing CI. Like he taught me so much. And um, he, oh, th thank you for explaining that, Janae, the MPT. Um, but yes, it's an, it's an exam you have to take um, to become like a physical therapist. So after you graduate from PT school. But yeah, I had a great time here. And this was my first time working with, well, having a CI that was um, black and working like at a clinic where all the therapists were black and we had so much fun. We was in there cutting up y'all. It was amazing. And I just learned so much. Like they were all so knowledgeable and everyone was um, in different stages. So like, this is Tracy all the way on the left. And um, he did like PRN, he was a PTA, but he's been in the field for like ever. And he, I think he was in the military. So he just had so much that he was doing and teaching us. And um, he would always joke, he would say, you know, it's less than 5% of African-Americans in like physical therapy. And if you want to know where they're at, they're all in Blackwood, South Carolina at Dreyer's. And I'm like, Tracy, stop. And then this was Lee. He was a new grad at the time. And then Mike, that was my CI. So all of them were wonderful. Um, I got a 
question in the chat. Um, do you have any recommendations for preparing for the workload and studying in PT school that I should start doing in undergrad as an upcoming senior? Do you recommend any prep programs? Yes, I do. And you know what's so funny? I didn't put it on this presentation because I was like, they probably like don't need this. So I took it out, but yes. So, and then this is, is this Asia from, do I know you Asia from the, um from Florida? No, I might know you, I don't know. But so what I would recommend, oh, that's, oh my gosh, thank you for joining. Wow, we need to meet in person, y'all. Um. So yes, so I recommend VCU program. So VCU has a program called um, the Summer Academic Enrichment Program. And it's a, si it's a six week program where you can apply to get in and they provide you with a stipend and you would go live on campus and you would take classes like as if you were already a PT student. So, and it's only for like, um, it's for undergrad. And I think like one year after, like if you're taking a gap year, you can apply too. But I want to say, let me pull it up right now, because I think the application is going to be coming up soon, like the deadline. But this one, like, and this for like dentistry. Oh, yeah. So, oh, the deadline passed, y'all. March 14th. But this is the one I would recommend. Um, and yeah, seniors, graduates, yeah. I would say do that. I know Janae, it looks like Janae posts some stuff in the chat as well. And I would just say as much, get as much experience as you can. So what you're doing now, you know, I know I've met you on a webinar before. Um, so just getting all that experience down, like talking to people about the field that you want to go into. And then um, also, I really like Netter's Anatomy Coloring Book. So... This is another way to get prepared just to learn more about um, like learning about anatomy. And it's fun, like it's a coloring book and it goes over like different muscles and like the blood supply and the nerve supply. You don't have to memorize it, you know, but it's just a fun way to get yourself prepared for that. Um, and also I recommend my book, 2.76, reading that because that's where I go more in depth about um, my journey throughout physical therapy school and the experiences in um things that I got to do to help me get to the position I'm in today. But yeah, so doing that and looking at what Janae put to, um, go back to this. Okay, so then this was me in Guatemala and it was really cool because I got to work alongside like physiotherapy students there and, um, it was really like we were both learning like together and we got to work with pediatric patients. I talk about in my book how this lady there started a pediatric clinic because her son ended up contracting dengue from a mosquito and he was typically developing, but then he ended up getting like meningitis and was fully dependent for everything. So she opened up a clinic, but yeah, we had a good time. And as far as scholarships, um, Here's a list of scholarships that you all can apply to if you're in school, if you're looking to go to PT school. Um, the Ursano Military Scholarship is for um, students whose family has served in the military. So my dad was in the Army, and it's like super, super easy to apply. You just have to put in your information, and then um, they'll contact you if you um, are eligible. But most people are eligible, so they really are like passionate about helping students get an ed education. FASWEB is more of like a um, generic one where you like have to put in what you're looking for and like kind of search through some things. So with that one, just be aware of like scams. The Rising Tide Crest Scholarship, the APTA has scholarships, and of course like the NABBT has scholarships. The American Academy of Physical Therapy, Representation Matters, Black Girl, White Coat, and then a new grad scholarship from AMN Healthcare. And AMN Healthcare is where I did my first travel contract. And also, oh, okay. Um, University of Maryland Eastern Shores also has an in-person prep program for students that have been accepted into a PT program. That's a wonderful, yes, do that one. That sounds good. Okay. And then preparation. 
um, for the work field. So I talked about how I did an early intervention certificate program, and that was through Georgetown University. And that's where I got to learn about working with children and families who have disabilities, and it was a paid program. And then I also did the leadership education and neurodevelopmental and related disabilities. So the LEND program is um, it's, it's available in almost every state. And it's for people who want to learn more about like, it's really heavy on autism if they want to learn more about autism, but it can be for anybody. Like if you are in undergrad, if you're in PT school, I did it after I graduated PT school and they also provide you with a stipend as well. So I would say if, you, if you're if you interested in PEDS, definitely check this program out um, and you get to learn from OTs, speech language pathologists, um, developmental pediatricians, um, psychologists, like it's, it's really good, highly recommend. And as far as student loan forgiveness, right now Hawaii is doing something called the HELP. And um, this is where they provide you with forgiveness if you are qualified healthcare professionals. So OT, PT, speech, behavior, um, anything like that, you would just have to commit to working here for two years. And it doesn't matter if it's like not for profit, for profit. It's really um, um, very generic, which is why I like it too. And you don't have to commit to working on like one island. Like you can go to another island in Hawaii and work there too. And you can do part-time or full-time working out here. As far as like, a lot of people do the public service loan forgiveness, which is nice, but you have to work for yeah profit organization and you have to make at least like 120 qualifying payments and I'm like you know that's nice I didn't apply for that one but I applied for the help and I'm waiting to hear back from them so hopefully I hear something they said I should hear something by May but yeah and then my upcoming goals so I definitely want to do more speaking engagements I want to become an adjunct professor I have a mentorship program but um I'm trying to do more like a self-guided mentorship and um and all that but I haven't finished it yet I also want to do an audio an audio book but with that like you have to have your own like production and stuff so I'm still working on that one too by the end of the year I have it done and I'm also hosting a healthcare retreat in Brazil so this is from August 30th through September 3rd and with this it's really just having fun like um I love to travel I could click on the link, but I guess not. I love to travel and just see the world. And I actually just got back from Belize. And um, why is this? Let me pull up the itinerary. And I never been to Brazil before, so I was like, I really want to go here. So it's with the world within us, and this is um a woman owned company as well, and. She does a bunch of trips all over the place. She went to school in South Carolina, but I actually met her on Instagram. And um, yeah, the deposit is four sixty five, and this is, it talks about everything that's included, um, airport transfers, not the flight though, but once you're in Brazil, like everything, the transportation is included, breakfast at the hotel, um, going to see one of the wonders of wonders of the world. Um, Sugarloaf Mountain cooking and yeah this is a hotel it's so nice oh my gosh I have to go but yes if y'all are interested do y'all actually do service while you're there so we're looking to do a um class <laughs> like kind of like dynamic movement um therapy I don't know if you've okay. seen like, pediatric PTs like on Instagram and stuff where they do a lot of they do a different approach to um interventions and they'll kind of like have they call it like the floating babies and they'll have the babies up and doing stuff like that but I found a clinic there that I wanted to learn from them so it's not okay. really we're going out there and doing service but I kind of wanted to um partner with the local clinic out there and see if they like needed like a fundraiser for something and then like we can do an exchange like that like y'all teach us and then we'll like help do something that y'all are already um doing out there but Ooh. everything that is on this list is like woman owned and it's local. So we're supporting like a lot of native people that live there. Um, and not like all like the tourist stuff. Right. Yeah. 
that. And let me see y'all. I think I'm done talking. I know I talk a lot. Um, yeah, so that was pediatric physical therapy. This is my email, my website, my social media. Um, if y'all have any questions, let me know. Put them in the chat. Unmute. But thank y'all for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, I don't take it lightly every time I get to share my testimony because you never know who needs to hear what you're saying. But yes, this is wonderful. Thank y'all for being here. I know it's a little late where everyone is at. Any questions about anything? If not, I don't have a question so far, but it was cool to hear your story and how you got to where you are because I feel like I felt everything you said, like the struggle, the writing on your board. Like I had five whiteboards uh, of just trying to retain the information. And I'm the student also who struggles in school or you didn't struggle in school, but you had your challenges and I have my challenges as well. So just to hear how you overcome and me yeah, overcoming, it just feels good to, you know, kind of be affirmed in that way. Like we can make it like we're here for a reason. Um, and we're gonna make it out. So yeah. it was, thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. Yes, that's what it's all about. De definitely. I'm glad you feel inspired. Thank you so much for sharing that. Aww. Yeah, taking it one day at a time. That's what you gotta do. Anybody else? Any other questions? You have a question in the chat. Oh, I do. Oops, sorry, y'all. Oh my. Oh my. My bad. Um. What are some ways you study for the GRE? The GRE. So I'm not a standardized test type of person. So for that, I also was um gifted a Kaplan um study platform. So at Virginia State University, that's where I went for undergrad, Virginia State. And my honors program director, he had this course where we had to take where it prepared us to for the GRE. So it's through Kaplan, K-A-P-L-A-N. And we had an instructor come in once a week and go over once again, like study tips um, and techniques and strategies to use. So even if you didn't know the answer, like you could still make it out. But, and we had like mm. a GRE book that we use as well. So I would say go through Kaplan. It's expensive, you know, see if your school will pay for it. Like I said, the honors program paid for it for, for us, but I, could not study for my like on my own like I'm not that type of person when it comes to standardized tests also what are some ways you prep for going into PT school so for me I was a student athletic trainer and um I realized I hated it because I had to be like a first responder um I had somebody a football player ended up like breaking his leg and we had to go out and like splint him and I was like oh I don't want to do this so I did more of like the rehab part and it was so much fun. Like, um, I really loved helping people um, learn about their body and recovery. I love that part of physical therapy. So that's how I kind of got started. And then I did like a lot of shadowing and um, yeah, like student athletic training, shadowing physical therapists. And yeah, that's pretty, I would say that's the big, the big two that I did. Lastly, LOL, what factors play role played a role into choosing what school you decided to go to okay for me I didn't care what school I went to I just wanted to get into PT school now you shouldn't think like that you should look at the stats and all that stuff and making sure like they have a, a high passing like MPTE rate um you can look for like if you have to do clinical rate rotations in state some of them like if you go to school in DC, they want you to do your clinical rotations in DC. But for my school, like I could do it like international. I could do um, back at home in South Carolina. Like it, we had different options. Um, I will also look at Cadaver Lab, seeing how long Cadaver Lab is going to be. And if um, I need to charge my computer. And if like you have to, if you're going to be working with other students from other disciplines, and researching like what your professors are doing. So if you feel like, you know what, I'm kind of interested in pediatrics, but I don't know, look into see if any of your professors have like a pediatric background because my professor, she had a neuro background and a pediatric background and she was wonderful. So it's really, you know, but some programs don't have like a strong pediatric um, coursework. So looking into that, 
But yo, anything else? Y'all got questions on? Hey Jasmine, I have a question. And you know, first off, great presentation. I really enjoyed it. I can tell you put like a lot of uh, effort into your presentation. So thank you so much. Um, you mentioned that uh, you also work PRN at a SNF. Could you talk about like your work schedule, um, like your schedule for your main job and for your PRN job? Yes. Um. So now I was. Let me move my computer. I'll charge it. But I was working um four tens. I've never worked like a Monday through Friday, like eight to five. Like that's just not what um I like to do. But so now I do three tens at my pediatric job. And I do like PRN maybe like a couple hours out of the month at the skilled nursing facility. When I did PRN for um when I did PRN for um inpatient rehab, it was definitely more organized. It was like I had to do at least two shifts out of the month. And I like that because then I had a schedule. But now it's kind of like they're like, can you come in and do an evaluation? And which is cool. Like I definitely, you know, I can do that. But um it's I feel like this is like a true PRN, like a, hey, like we got a mission um coming in over the weekend. Like, can you come do it so we can meet like the quota and the standards and stuff so it's really whenever they need me but yeah for my pediatric job I do three tens so I do 30 hours there thank you so much and I had a follow-up question um and I feel you on the um, it being like a little unorganized I also do PR and that is sniff so it's like okay yeah you know, whatever they need so I understand can you talk about, um, I know you mentioned like you really like the, you know, working with de uh, development with Pete. Can you talk about the difference for those that don't know about um, just like how you approach working with Pete's development versus orthopedic diagnosis with an adult? Yes. Um, so developmental piece is more so for people or for patients who have developmental disorders. So like Down syndrome, um, cerebral palsy, any type of rare like genetic disorder, um, born prematurely, those are like my favorite patients to work with versus like orthopedics. I do see patients who, kids who have orthopedic injuries. So they broke their arm. Like that's something, mm -mm, put them on somebody else's schedule or, you know, they injured their thumb. I'm like, no y'all. Or they, um, they have back pain or, they have like Auschwitz slaughters. I see a lot of kids with that and have right knee pain, left knee pain. Um, so, and I mean, it's cool. It's like, I, I see this football player, he's 14 and he has Auschwitz slaughters and he's so funny y'all. But um, sometimes I get into this coaching mode and I don't know where it comes from, but I'm like, we gotta do this now, son. And he's like, what? And I'm like, I don't know, I'm sorry. I just thought that people say that, I don't know. <laughs> it is like, or sometimes I'll, like, for example, for the skilled nursing facility, you know, I work in pediatrics primarily. So when I come into your room at eight o'clock in the morning, good morning, how are you? And I had this patient tell me I was too happy. And I was like, I don't like what? So it's, you know, for I know my fit is developmental beats. I'm aware of that. And, you know, it's orthopedics is just, I can do it. I'm just not passionate about it. It's just not. Mm -mm. Anything else, y'all? Um, I have a question. Um, so I am like, uh, after I graduate, I already have like a job lined up and I'm going into outpatient pediatrics. Um, and I'm kind of scared because like, like I know I know like the information, but in peds, like there's always going to be something that you like, haven't seen before and then you also have to deal with parents and like thinking like oh like does this person really know what they're doing um so do you have any advice for a new grad who's like just starting and like not really having enough like a ton of experience um with working like independently yes first of all congrats that's wonderful where is is that in um Missouri is that thank you oh I got a job at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Children's Oh my, first of all, that is a wonderful. We actually use the Cincinnati Children Toe Walking Guideline. So they are like really big on like the research and all that stuff. That's wonderful. Um, 
I would say, well, first, number one, you always know more than the parent when it comes to physical therapy. The parent always knows more about their child. So a lot of the times too, sometimes I'll get in my head and I'll think like, what I'm, I'm like, man, this is so easy. Like I'm just helping a child roll. And then I'll say, Hey, like, it's your turn. Like, mom, I want, I want to see you do it. Like, this is what I did. And then they can't do it. And I'm like, wow, like they, you know, I really know more than them. So yeah, you always know more than a parent. And then you are, so for me, when I first started, and even now people are like, oh, like, you were young and all this and that. I'm like, y'all stop. But I always talk about my experience. So when I first meet a parent and I feel like they're a little on edge, I'm always like, hey, I'm Jasmine. I'm from South Carolina. Um, I did, you know, I went to Shenandoah University for PT school and then I completed an early intervention certificate program. So I have a lot of experience working with birth to three years of age group, um, you know, stuff like that. But parents, I mean, I feel like the biggest questions parents will ask you like I've had, if I worked with a child who has like Down syndrome, sometimes the parents will say, do you have experience working with kids who have Down syndrome? And it's like, I do. But if you really don't like have that experience, you can say, oh, you know, I took um, courses or I follow this page on Instagram, not Instagram, but I follow um, different outlooks and um, to get more of an understanding or something that, that you know, it, it shows off your level of um, expertise to them. And really... Because building that rapport is important, especially with parents. Like they, a lot of the parents I've met have been through so much like traumatic things where, you know, they had a baby that was born 24 weeks. So they're already on edge about everything. So really like getting to know them, talking to them and listening and making sure, you know, you're not making those same mistakes that the other provider did. Like sometimes they'll tell me about like NICU nurses or, you know, this doctor said my child would never walk or do this and that. So just really, you know, making it known that, hey, you know your child, I know what I'm doing, like, and we're going to work together to reach the goals. Um, so that did, I would say, the other thing too is making sure you start your discharge planning on day one, because a lot of, and with outpatient pediatrics is a little different, but with early intervention, like if I'm working with a baby and I'm seeing them and now they're one and now they're two, and the parents think this is just a forever thing. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, I'm going to end up giving you the tools you need to help like, your child. And they're not going to have to come to therapy weekly for the rest of their lives. So just making that known too and saying like, hey, these are some of the goals I want to see your child reach. Being able to roll, sit, crawl, um, walk, run. And once we reach those goals, like we'll talk about um, um, decreasing the frequency for PT and eventually discharge because yeah, parents will, they sometimes they don't want to leave. That's another goal. Anything else, y'all? I can be on here forever, y'all. It's only, what time is it? It's only, it? oh, my Apple Watch, that's on, oh, 315, so check out. Y'all good? Well, for the people who won the Amazon gift card, please make sure I have your email. And um, I also have some signed copies of 2.76. So if you want to purchase a signed copy, please let me know. I have eight more left. If not, you can purchase directly from Amazon. Um, and yes, y'all, we had to do more collabs together and all that good stuff. But I'm proud of y'all. Thank y'all for being on. I know it's a little late where y'all at, but yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Jasmine. Yes, bye, <laughs> Dr. Janae. Bye, y'all. Thank you. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. Let me copy before y'all end it. Let me see. Let me copy this email. Thank <laughs> you so much. Yes, thank you. Let me go to my... And to all my PV people, I'm available. You can hit up <laughs> NABPT if you have questions or need advice. And we'll have uh, Dr. Jasmine's Instagram so you can DM her, follow her for more insight as well. And thanks everybody for coming. Yes, thank you, y'all. <laughs> yeah, thank you, y'all. Really appreciate it. Yes, I appreciate it. Okay, I got one email. Janae, I think I have your email. And then I have Sydney's email too. So Jayla, Janae, and Sydney. Okay. All right, so bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.